Hey everyone. Alright, so let's talk about Dante's Peak, uh, the 1997 disaster movie starring Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton. Now, I've just got done watching this movie uh, for the first time, in fact, but it's a movie that I'd heard of before because I'm quite a big Pierce Brosnan fan. I came across it, you know, looking at his IMDb and you know, looking at Pierce Brosnan movies on Amazon. But it's just one that I've always, you know, passed by. I've never, you know, it's just one that's always been there on the list, but I've never paid much attention to. Anyway, it was on the TV, so I thought, you know what? Let's sit down and give this a watch. And I'm really glad I did. It was better than I expected. It was, you know, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I thought it would probably be a decent movie. Um, but, yeah, I really got into it. And what it, what it is, is because it is a disaster movie, you know. Um, but they're, they're not the sort of movies that have ever really appealed to me, you know. So I think that was one of the reasons why I'd never paid much mind to it but it was actually a decent movie it really was it was surprising you know obviously um I think it'd be safe to say in the late 90s or certainly the back end of the 90s they became quite popular the disaster movies because obviously um you had this one dante's peak uh you had obviously the year later in 98 you had deep impact and also around that time you had godzilla which is kind of a disaster movie or you know um but yeah it seemed you there seemed to be uh quite quite a few disaster movies around that time but yeah, this was a really this was really good. So of course, the basic premise of this movie is um, Pierce Brosnan is uh, that's his area of expertise, you know, monitoring volcanoes. I think he refers to himself as a volcanologist at one point in the movie, and obviously he works at this observatory, and he gets sent over to Dante's Peak uh, to investigate or inspect this particular volcano and he, do, and he goes over there and he, has, he takes a look and he you know takes some samples but then they come across something really alarming where they find this uh, dead couple uh, in one of the uh, like um, hot springs there uh, they've been you know uh, they've gone for a swim in here and they've end, or gone for a have gone for a dip and ended up dead and when Pierce Brosnan takes uh, samples of the water in there he finds the ha that this high level you know it's highly acidic there's high levels of acid in the water and says well this could be an early warning sign so he calls you know he says he calls the observatory and says you know you need to get your team out here now something's wrong you know um so the team comes out and conduct uh, various other tests and experiments and make various other observations and to begin with they're not they're not buying it you know they don't want to hear it they no one's listening to Pierce Brosnan but of course things go on and eventually what tips the scales is when the um when the uh water when the town's water supply becomes polluted with i think uh, it's sulfur dioxide and they say you know this is you know this is a major warning sign you know that an, an eruption's imminent and of and obviously then they finally believe him but of course it's too late by then and you know, no sooner does they believe, uh, believe Pierce Brosnan and say, right, we need to get evacuation procedures in place and call a meeting to inform the town of what's happening, the damn volcano goes off. You know, it erupts. You know, this is happening right now. We're too late. We are out of time. And so 
the main body of the movie, well, that's not actually fair because the first half of the movie, you know, the movie's uh, just all about one hour 45 minutes long. And the first 45, 50 minutes is the build up, you know, like uh, the ins- like the go out to Dante's pit, conduct their observation, their experiments, and then the second half of the movie is the eruption of the volcano and getting the hell out of there. So, yeah. About halfway through the movie, the volcano finally erupts, and then, of course, chaos ensues, you know, m- to quote Bill Murray from Ghostbusters, you know, mass hysteria. Um, yeah, like, you know, it's like rush, yeah, it's basically rush out, you know, cars trying, you know, smashing in, you, into each other, left, right and centre, tr- you know, trying to get out of town. Bridges collapsing, telephone poles collapsing and crushing cars, buildings collapsing, you know. Um, and like you say, Linda Hamilton and Pierce Brosnan are in the middle of all of this. Of course, Linda Hamilton, uh, she f- the way she fits into all of this is she is, of course, the mayor of Dante's Peak. And, th- you know, it's you've got to feel bad for her because... When Pierce Brosnan comes out to investigate, this town has just been voted the second best place to live in the country. <laughs> not anymore. Well, not after this. You know, and she even says at one point why they're, why they're trying to get out of there, you know. Took eight years to get this place on its feet and up and running. <laughs> you really feel bad for these guys. So, yeah. Um... Everyone's try, um, trying to get out of there. You know, the um, observational team are getting themselves out of there. Pierce Brosnan says, you know, I've got to go um, with Linda Hamilton and uh, pick her kids up. I'll, you know, I'll see you after. I'll see you on the other side when we finally get out of this mess. You know, but don't wait, you know, you've got to get out of here. So him and him, sorry, he and Linda Hamilton go to her house to try and pick up, uh, to pick up the kids but the kids have took her car and gone to pick up their grandmother who lives up the hill further to the further to where the uh, volcano is so obviously Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton don't you know can't afford to waste any time they've got to go straight after them so the kids arrive at the grandmother's house Piers Brosnan and Linda Hamilton arrive shortly after, but the hell of it is, the road's been completely wiped out, so they can't go back. So they say, you know, can't take, you can't use these, you know, we can't take the road, so we're going to have to think of something else. Luckily, the, uh, the grandmother lives by a lake and there's a speedboat there. Um, so yeah, they all pile into that. And uh, you have to, you know, get to the other side, uh, get a, across the, uh, across, I think it's like a lake, across the lake on the speedboat, and finally managed to do that. Uh, but, the, uh, the the hell of it, again, the hell of it is, uh, the water in the lake has become, you know, become highly acidic. And so, you know, it's starting to eat through the bottom of the boat, and also, it eats through the mortar. And uh, uh, Pierce Brosnan has to, like, wrap his hand up in his jacket and kind of, like, paddle as best he can. Fortunately, they get, you know, they get well over, you know, they're nearly there by the time the motor gives out. So, obviously, he doesn't have a short, he doesn't have a long way to, um, to go. And uh, the grandmother eventually sacrifices, um, sacrifices herself. Uh, by jumping out the boat and just pulling it to, you know, the river, uh, to the, uh, to the bank, to the river bank, because Pierce Brosnan's doing the best he can, he's trying his best to keep calm, but, you know, the, the, uh, the acidic water is eating more and more through the bottom of the boat, they don't have time to wait until Pierce Brosnan can get them over the end you know someone had to do something and they had to do it there and then so yeah the grandmother sacrifices herself and so and with that the initial eruption if you can call it that comes to a close and we have kind of like 
we have kind of like a calm for a bit, you know, and everything, you know, everything dies down. And during this time, Piers Brosnan and Linda Hamilton and her two kids uh, managed to find another car. And also they managed to find their dog as well, because when the, uh, or should I say the grandmother's dog, because when they go up to the grandmother's house, the, um, you know, and they're outside uh, getting the boat, the dog runs off. But find, fortunately, hey, they managed to find it again. So that plot point, uh, or so should I say that subplot is uh, being cleared up. So yeah, Pierce Frosten, Linda Hamilton, the two kids, and now the dog, uh set off in this new car and you know they're gonna try the best to get out of town now and while all this is going on it cuts to like the uh the uh volcanologist team making their way out of town and while they're while they're on the way they go across this bridge but there's a, it's like a convoy of three cars you know uh, two of the cars make it across and then the final car which has kind of like the leader of the team in uh, he doesn't make it across unfortunately because the bridge gives out you know so and obviously unfortunately he doesn't make it in time so he dies quite spectacularly actually because he gets out the car and he's going to jump but again there's no time the bridge gives out so obviously we see him actually holding on the rails of the bridge get flung into you know this wave of ash and you know just bits of broken tree you know branches broken cars just being thrown along but guess what this is supposed to be a real sad moment and initially it is you know like obviously all the rest of the t uh, team are distraught you know because obviously they were all good friends you know so they were sad they were distraught to see you know uh, the devastated and it was a really sad moment until they decide to chuck a Wilhelm scream I don't know where the hell that came from. They do it really discreetly, but it's there. It's there. You can hear it. Obviously, the music scores going, and obviously the uh, the sound of the bridge breaking, and you know. But yeah, the w Wilhelm scream just cuts through everything. And, uh, obviously. And, you know, it really ruins the mood of that scene. You know, it's supposed to be this sad, dramatic scene. One of the main, one of the main, really important characters has died, but no, all the sadness goes out the window when I chuck a Wilhelm scream. Great call, Roger Donaldson. Great call. I honestly, I don't know where the hell that came from, but fair enough, that happens, and. We cut back to Pierce Brosnan, Linda Hamilton, the two kids, and the dog. Don't forget the dog. Um, they're on the way out of the town. Um, but obviously, the hell of it is before they can get out. Uh, before they can get out of there, we get the second wave of the volcano again. If you can call it a second wave, the volcano. You know, uh, the volcano. But this time, it's much worse. The volcano really goes for it. This time, it's really erupting now. You know, like the whole top's blown. Um, and obviously, Pierce Brosnan is obviously he's driving because it's Pierce Brosnan. You know. Um, you know, he's basically has to as best he can outrun this damn volcano and he realizes we're not going to make it in time uh, but then they remember the sun had a hiding place in um it's basically this old abandoned mine so he so he says you know we're not going to get out of town in time let's go to this abandoned mine you know we'll, we'll have more chance of making it to there than getting out of out, out of this town so they go there and yeah they manage to make it in time. Pierce Rosman just smashes them because obviously uh, the doors to the mine are, are, are barricaded, you know, padlocked and everything. But no, Pierce Rosman just drives through full speed ahead and, you know, basically drives as far into the mine as he can, um, you know, to, uh, which will obviously act as a shelter from this volcano. And it does, but obviously the car gets wedged and can't go any further, you know, can't go any further. But they're safe now, for, well, for the moment they are. Um, yeah, so that shields them from the volcano. 
And so, but obviously, they can't go back now. And obviously, they can't drive any further into the mine. So, Pierce Brosnan manages to kick the windshield through. And, you know, they all, go, they all get out the car through the windshield. And uh, Linda Hamilton's son leads them to where his hideout is. And basically, the plan is just to hold up, you know, hold up there for as long as they can. And then Pierce Brosnan remembers in the car that he'd, he'd forgot to uh, bring with him, you know, um, this th uh, thing called ALF. You know, it's an abbreviation, but basically it's like a transmitter provided by NASA that he'd brought with him. You know, so he you know, thought that, you know, this might come in handy. Better bring this with me. Uh, so he says, look, I've got to go back for it, all right? You stay here, all right? Be safe. I'll be back soon. So anyway, he's on his way to get this transmitter, and then as he's on his way, you you know you know something's gonna happen, but yeah, the mine ends up ends up or part of the mine ends up collapsing, and he ends up getting separated from um, Linda Hamilton and her two kids. Like they're on one side of where of, and he's on the other, and obviously you've got all this huge pile of rubble in the middle of them. So Pierce Brosnan's on his own now, and said, but you know. Still got to get to, still got to try and get this transmitter. And anyway, he's getting further and further back to the car. And another part of the mine roof falls down and actually falls on Pierce Brosnan. <sighs> Tell you what, he goes through it in this movie. Because the movie begins with, um, the movie begins four years prior to the main body of the movie. Um, over in Colombia where he was, he been stationed at the time him and um well he wasn't married to her but him and his partner uh, who was also a volcanologist and they're both trying to get out of there and they're both getting a car and they're driving away from this volcano that's erupting and this huge volcanic rock comes through the roof of the car and kills her uh, his partner kills her outright smacks her full force in the face she's bleeding out kills her instantly and Pierce Brosnan's devastated so yeah he's got he goes through it in this movie both emotionally and physically you know the emotional trauma of losing his partner the emotional you know the frustration of no one believing me um you know having to keep calm while all this destruction and chaos is going on around him and then obviously get a, part of this mind roof collapses on him and he gets busted open and his left arm just breaks and the bone comes through the skin. P yeah, PG-13, everybody. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, rated 12 in the UK. But, of course, this was the 90s, man, where, where PG-13 and 12 rated movies weren't afraid to show stuff. Yeah, he breaks his arm and the bone comes through the skin. It's cringeworthy. It's a brutal scene. Next day, Pierce Brosnan screams out in pain, and you feel for him, man. Pierce Brosnan's really good in this movie. You know, obviously, we're used to seeing him playing this suave, sophisticated... Like I say, he is the idea. He's the perfect James Bond. And obviously, this came out in 97, when he was uh, the same year as Tomorrow Never Dies. So he was, obviously, well into his run as James Bond at this point. But he really shows his acting ability in this one. Um... He really does. He plays a really good part. Yeah, he's genuinely acting in this one. And like I say, you can buy him in this role as a volcanologist, you know. Because obviously, you know, some people are cast in certain roles and you think, really? Are they the best person you could have got for this type of role? In this, Pierce Brosnan is the best person you could have got for this role. He's really good. So yeah... He's under this pile of rubble now. And the car is right there. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> he manages to pull himself out from under this rubble. Broken arm and all. And he manages to just stagger over the car. Crawl in through, this, uh, through the windscreen. Or where the windscreen used to be. Before I kick the damn thing out. And there it is. Right under the passenger seat. This uh, metal box, ALF, this transmission, uh, this trans uh, transmitting de transmission device. Uh, 
And anyway, he's laid on he's laid on the seat, and he's you know reaching for it. And then another part of the mine sh of the uh, roof of the mine gives away, uh, mine shaft gives away, and it's com it comes down on the uh, on the car, and it completely caves the roof of the car in. So Pierce Brosnan's laid across these two seats, obviously broken arm, and um, he's got this obviously. Uh, this torch, which is really rammed up in with chest in his face at this point, um, and like you say, he's reaching for this box. <laughs> Again, could things get any worse for the, uh, for him at this point? Like I say, he could have died in this movie, and it would not have been surprising. You know, even though it's Pierce Brosnan, even though he's our leading man, he could have died in this movie, and it would not have been out of place. You were, you know. Um, yeah, because like I say, this movie got pretty dark. It gets pretty dark and pretty, uh, pretty bleak. Um, like I say, when they're driving through what's left of Dante's Peak, it's just covered in piles and piles of ash. All the s destroyed buildings lying around. The Jesus Christ. Um. Like this volcano, certainly, like Pierce Brosnan says at one point, it's certainly a volcano with an attitude. Damn right it is. Um, so yeah, Pierce Brosnan's squashed up in this damn car, but he finally manages to hit the button on this transmission device, which sends out um, sends out a distress signal. So yeah, he finally, you know, awesome. He managed to. He managed to um, send the distress signal, and then it cuts uh, to what's actually two days later, and we're back with uh, what's left of the observatory team, the volcanologists, and they've obviously managed to get out of there by now, and they're obviously back, um, back at the uh, their like headquarters, so to speak, their observatory, and. They're in their office, and one of them notices uh, on one of the machines the distress signal uh, beeping, and he says, "How long? Uh, you know, how long has this been beeping for? Or how long's this? Because well, it's not a beep; it's a light flashing on the machine. So it's how long's this light been flashing for? I said, oh, about two days now. So poor Pierce Brosnan has been stuck in that squashed-up car, broken up." Um, and everything unable to move for two days poor guy i mean fair enough linda hamilton and her two kids and the dog were trapped down there too but obviously they had a bit more breathing space and i remember the kids say, said at one point well you know i've got some food and water that i've stored down here so they've had something to live on Pierce Brosnan has has had nothing um so yeah uh the team see the distress signal then it uh, then the next scene they all go out there and they have a rescue team out there at this abandoned mine shaft and basically they get you know they get Pierce Brosnan out the car he's fine thankfully and they get the car out of there and then Linda Hamilton and her two kids and the dog are able to get out and so finally manage to rescue them and then obviously the movie ends with them uh, being put onto a helicopter and flown out of there. And that's pretty much our movie. So they finally, finally make it to safety uh, after all that. Um, and like I say, uh, most of the volcanologists made it to safety apart from the leader who died at the bridge with, uh, like I say, Wilhelm scream and everything. Um, but yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much uh, where it ends, you know. And then, uh, well, that's the ending shot. Uh, them being flown out on the helicopter, and then obviously the credits scroll. And again, it's something I've mentioned time and time again, and something I've been quite fortunate with a lot of the movies I've watched for these reviews recently. That when the, um, you know, when the like primary objective of the movie's over with you know like when the climax is uh, has happened it doesn't waste any time finishing up you know just like I say 
the rescue team arrive, get Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton, her kids and the dog out of the mine shaft and get them flown out of there to a, presumably a medical facility. Well, Pierce Brosnan looks as though he's going to need it because obviously, I did, obviously there was an ambulance at the scene and obviously they'd have put some, you know, like, uh, like a, you know, some sort of temp, given some temporary care for his arm. I, sorry, you know, real technical terms here. But they've done some for him, but you know, to tide him over. But yeah, he'll need medical attention as soon as he lands, uh, and all of them will, because they got pretty, you know. Even Linda Hamilton and her kids, they got pretty badly banged up, you know, when um get trying to escape uh you know in that car you know the uh, there was like when they drove into the mine shaft i think they all took some pretty uh, nasty bumps well, i remember when the daughter sat up in the back seat her nose had been busted open so jesus christ they must have uh, when the car got wedged in that mine it must he must have been going at some speed but then can you blame him you've got a volcano eruption coming after you um yeah <laughs> yeah you got a ton of lava coming after you um so yeah <laughs> yeah this movie wrapped up pretty quick because again me um, i'm mr inconsistent really because like i said i love return of the king but then i like my movies to finish up pretty quick and obviously the amount of different endings that return of the king had you know complete opposite really but yeah this movie did a good job of finishing up quickly and like i say i really enjoyed this movie i really did uh, a lot better than i thought it was going to be in like i say linda hamilton was really good you know, gotta love linda hamilton um she does a really good job in this movie and like i say uh, she gets top billing along obviously pierce Brosnan gets first bill and then she's second build but yeah she really does deserve that second bill because she's in it for the majority of the movie you know like next to pierce Brosnan, and she is the main one in this you know it's not like pierce Brosnan is the definitive lead and she's just in some support and capacity no she's right there with him um and that's one nice thing about her character like, when all of Pierce Brosnan's team isn't listening to him and other uh, members of, like, the town council aren't listening to him, Linda Hamilton stands by him all the way through. Like, she listens to this guy. She knows. This guy, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. I better listen to him. So, you know, she's a, she's a character you can really like. She isn't, like, a frustrating character, you know, like, oh, she's an idiot. What the hell is she doing in charge of this town? Can we get someone else, please? Someone who will listen to Pierce Brosnan. Like, Pierce Brosnan in this is like Kiefer Sutherland in 24. You know, when he says he, that he needs something or that he's got some important information, you listen to him and you get this guy whatever he needs. You know, that's how it works. Uh, but yeah, Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton really are great in this movie. They give really good performances and are both really likeable. Um, yeah, and like I say, good job by Roger Donaldson. He, uh, he managed to do, um, to give us a really good uh, disaster movie. Well, obviously, good job, Ro Roger Donaldson, except for putting that Wilhelm scream during that poor guy's death scene at the bridge. What the hell were you thinking, man? I mean, obviously, Roger Donaldson has reunited with Pierce Brosnan for this one, the November Man, and obviously that's coming out over here in the UK in November, and obviously I'll be going to see that on the first day, I don't care what happens, I'll make time to go and see that on the first day, because it's Pierce Brosnan back in an action movie, I was sold from the moment I heard about it, and obviously an R-rated action movie, but Roger Donaldson, you better not throw any Wilhelm screams in this damn movie, you got one, alright, you've had your one, Obviously, uh, you managed to, you didn't do it in the bounty, I don't think. But, fair enough, you did it in this one. You got one pass, alright? That's it now. There better not be a Wilhelm scream in the November, man. But, yeah. Um, this was a really good movie. And, like I say, if... Uh, 
it looks as though Pierce Brosnan and Roger Donaldson are a winning combination, so yeah, I'm even more looking forward to the November Man now. But yeah, this movie was really good. A lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I recommend this. Um, and like you like say, it was just on TV, and it was, uh, you know, just thought, hey, let's put this on. And it was a great watch. It really was. And again, passes quick. Let's say at 1 hour 45 minutes long, soon passes, it doesn't really drag. Um, and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that they got the they got it structured well, like they had a good amount of time for the build-up and then a good amount of time for the volcano erupting and then trying to evacuate and trying to get the hell out of there. Because obviously there's always that danger of having the uh, disasters whatever it may be um happen too early on and so obviously the main body of the movie is people you know trying to avoid uh, trying to get to safety because that can drag it really can i mean it's obviously to begin with yeah it's pretty exciting and all this chaos is going on um but yeah that can really drag you know it can get boring quick but the fact that this movie done it, you know, you know, had good amount of time to the build up and then good amount of time for the uh, volcano eruption and the evacuation, you know, it didn't drag. It really flowed. So yeah, that's um, that kind of brings this review to a close. I really liked it, and Pierce Brosnan was awesome in this. Um, yeah, so. That's basically my review, um, and of course, if you are if you are a fan of this movie and if you've seen it, I hope you agree with some of the points that I've made. And if you haven't seen it, I hope that this has sparked your interest to see to seek it out and um, and give it a watch. I mean, it's read it's readily available, of course, uh, on DVD and Blu-ray, you know, and it's not that expensive. And um, you, you could uh, and obviously it's available on TV you know if you've got sky uh, sky movies on demand it's on there so give it a watch if you're looking for if you're looking for a movie uh, but yes uh, that's my review thank you all for watching and thank you for sticking with me and of course if you do decide to give this movie a watch I hope you enjoy it thank you everyone and I will see you next time thank you